We have come to lesson eight in our study of the words used in the Lord's Prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Now in the original Greek, our daily bread comes before and give us today. It could be translated as our daily bread give us today. Because it comes first in the original Greek, let us first look at our daily bread. And as we meditate on the phrase, our daily bread, we first of all realize that the word bread often is used for food. For example, in Genesis 41, verse 54 to 55, we read, Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended, and the seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph had said. The famine was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. In other words, they had food. In countries where famine is acute and people are starving, this prayer, our daily bread, give us today, is a very heartfelt prayer. On the grave of a child that died of hunger, they placed an empty bowl because they hope that God may fill the empty bowl in heaven for the kid. How can we in our land of plenty, where we have the means to help, be just dismissive for those that are hungering? James reminds us that if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you should say to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what good is that? Therefore also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it is dead. And I'm also reminded of the words of Jesus in Matthew 25, verse 45, where he said, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Each of us can do something in some way to alleviate hunger, be it in our neighborhood, in our country, in our city, or in the world. Let us not forget that bread is a gift of God. James again tells us that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And it comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. It is God's blessing that we live in a land of plenty. It is his blessing that we have the opportunity, the health, and the ability to work and to earn our daily bread. Let's also be wise with the resources that God has given us that we will continue to have our daily bread and also have the means to share with others. Let's not squander the gifts that God has given us after Jesus fed the multitude, and when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. We can learn from this. Reuse and recycle. And perhaps the idea of reuse and recycle is not such a new idea, but also has biblical foundation. Jesus teaches us to pray for our daily bread. The word our is collective. We need to be concerned about our neighbor, about others as well. I don't just pray, give me my daily bread. I pray, give us our daily bread, yours and mine, and for the others as well. The Bible teaches us if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. 1 Timothy 5 verse 8. It is logical, common sense, and biblical that we care about our well-being. Although Jesus teaches us not to worry about our daily bread, we need to do our part. We're asking God to provide for us, give us our daily bread, we know that Jesus tells us not to worry about things 
of this life, but that does not mean that he intends us to be negligent. We should not live to work, but we should work to live. What does Jesus say? Jesus says, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Matthew 6, verses 25 and 26. What Jesus is talking about here is excessive worry. He wants us to get our priorities straight and put the spiritual things first. The striving after material things can become so excessive that it takes the place of God, therefore bordering on idolatry. But when Jesus tells us to take a lesson of the birds of the air, it doesn't mean that we should do nothing. God provides for the birds, but the birds still have to look for food and feed themselves. They don't just sit on a branch with their mouths open and expect food to pop into it. God has provided the suitable environment for food to grow. He provided the means of nourishment. But the birds also have to do something. Likewise, we are to be prudent so that we have enough to eat and that what we eat is healthy. But we shouldn't worry about it. We ask God for our daily bread and we do our part to obtain it. Even in the desert, where God provided for the children of Israel with manna, they still needed to go and gather it. God gave manna from heaven, but they had to go, gather it, and prepare it for themselves. They also had their part to do. It is noteworthy that praying for daily bread is not at the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, but more in the middle. First things first. Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6, verse 33. This principle is reiterated in this prayer. First the will of God, then the other concerns are added. However, the daily bread is not forgotten. It is part of the prayer. Because that too is the will of God, that we have our daily bread that we have the necessities of life. Even in the harshness of the desert, where the children of Israel wandered, God took care of them. In Deuteronomy 29, verse 5, we read, And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out, and your sandals have not worn out on your feet. And when Jesus sent his disciples out to preach the gospel, what did he tell them in Luke 9, verse 33? He said, Take nothing for the journey, neither staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not have two tunics apiece. For when Jesus asked them later in Luke 22, verse 35, when I sent you out without money bag and knapsack and sandals, did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. However, Jesus also taught them not to be fussy. He said in Luke 10, verse 8, Whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Give us our daily bread. When we ask God for our daily bread, we think first of all about physical bread. Bread in the Lord's Prayer is used as a figure of speech, where the part is used to refer to the whole. In literature, this is called a synecdoche. Bread is a collective term that means food, nourishment, and in general, the necessities of life which we need to survive. We can come to God for these. All of our concerns can be brought in prayer to the Lord. However, praying for our daily bread can also include the spiritual. We know that the metaphor of bread is one that Jesus often uses in the spiritual sense. In Matthew 4, verse 4, we read, Man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In praying, our Father in heaven, give us bread. The Jews must have thought of the bread of God that was given to the ancestors from heaven, namely manna. Jesus, however, says that that's not the true bread from heaven, but he says that he himself is the true bread from heaven. We read, our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. In continuing with the metaphor of bread from heaven, Jesus explains in John 6, verse 47 to 58, that his flesh and blood are the means to eternal life. He is the bread from heaven. Naturally speaking, without food, we cannot have physical life. Spiritually speaking, without Christ, we cannot have eternal life. Both of these statements can be restated as, without bread, no life. Physically, also spiritually. Jesus sacrificed his flesh and blood to atone our sins upon the cross. Without the sacrifice of Christ, there is no atonement, and thus no eternal life. Without this spiritual bread, we are spiritually dead. The same way that a lack of natural food would lead to natural death. How can we attain this spiritual life? If we believe that Jesus died for our sins and that God has given us Christ as the bread from heaven, then we can confess our sins to him. And we can claim 1 John 1 verse 9 to be our own. Because if we confess our sins, he is righteous and just to forgive us, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then we are empowered by Jesus to follow him. We're born again into the family of God and we attain spiritual life. If we look at the Lord's Supper and we read what Matthew says in Matthew 26, verse 26 to verse 28, we read here, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now we know that baptism, for example, symbolizes what has taken place in our lives. We have died to sin, and we are resurrected with Christ to a new life. In a similar way, the Lord's Supper is also a symbol of what has taken place both in our lives and on Calvary. Besides this, the bread also symbolizes that although we are many, we partake of one bread, and as there is one bread and we are many, so we all as many are united into one body, the body of Christ. And just as we are partakers of the bread, we are also partakers of the atonement that Jesus offers us. Talking about bread as a metaphor, the other thing that is symbolized by bread is doctrine. Doctrine or teaching is also referred to as bread. For example, Jesus warned his disciples about the teaching of the Pharisees. We read in Matthew 6, verse 6 to 8, and 11 to 12, Then Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves and said, It's because we have taken no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, O oh, you of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves because you have brought no bread? 
How is it you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The word of God is also metaphorically represented as bread. In John 1, we read that the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. And it was revealed among us as Jesus Christ. If we look at Revelation 19, verse 13, we read, He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So metaphorically, letting bread refer to Christ and the Word of God is not a contradiction. Even Ezekiel in Ezekiel 3, verses 1 to 4, is pictured as eating the scroll or eating the Word that comes from God. So just as we naturally need food to live physically, we also need the Word of God to live spiritually. The Word of God is our spiritual food. When we read it or when we hear it, our souls are nourished through it. But hearing is not sufficient. We need to put it into practice. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. John 4.4. 4. So now we have come back to the previous sentence in the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done. That is the bread or the food that Jesus was most concerned about. Thy will be done. It all ties together as Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. I have 10 questions which summarize this lesson. First question is, why should we pray, give us our daily bread? Secondly, what is the significance of the word our? What can we do to alleviate hunger in the world? Is concern and worry the same thing? Question five, in this prayer, do you think Jesus only talked about literal bread? Why or why not? Question six, what is meant by spiritual bread? Question seven, what does the Lord's Supper symbolize? Question eight, what is the leaven of the Pharisees? Question nine, metaphorically, how can the word of God be likened unto bread? And finally, how does our daily bread tie together with thy will be done? May God bless you and may he provide you with daily bread, physically and spiritually. Amen.